in every aspect of our lives, being positive is a constant challenge. For salespeople, it's like oxygen. Without it, you won't survive. Without it, you lose your energy, focus, and future. In this chapter, we're going to dig into this thing called positive attitude and come to understand it intimately. We're going to come to understand positivity so well that when you step away from today's lesson, you will have clarity about what you can and must do to be the positive person you need to be. It is not possible to transform yourself into a more positive salesperson without becoming a more positive person. This course is designed to assist you in transforming yourself into a more positive, accountable, and productive human being. This brings with it obvious benefits to your sales performance. We're going to take a look at the characteristics that define a positive attitude. Examine those things that war against our positivity and spend some time on exercises you can use to build positivity. Finally, we will leave you with a checklist that you can use every day to remind yourself about why having a positive attitude is critical and what you can do to get, protect, and maintain a positive attitude. To help you understand what a positive attitude is, let's start by describing traits and characteristics we all recognize when we see people with a positive attitude. The first thing most people think of when they define a positive person is someone who smiles. How does a baby get their way? They can't talk or walk, they have no teeth, but they can own the world with their smile. That smile can make raving idiots out of otherwise sane parents. The smile is that powerful. Smiling has a powerful positive impact not only on the one getting the smile, but on the one smiling as well. People with great attitudes have high levels of action with lots of activity. They are busy and they get things done. They're very efficient. They're organized and don't waste time. They get more production from each hour they work than others. They know what to do, when to do it, and how to say no to time-stealing tasks. They see problems as opportunities. Well, that's the life of every salesperson. The customer tells them the problem and the salesperson solves the problem and makes money. The ability to see problems as opportunities is the trait of a good attitude. They work a plan because they have a plan. Working their plan keeps them positive. They expect good things are going to happen to them. If these are some of the characteristics of a positive attitude, then let's look at some training that you can use in eliminating those things that erode or threaten your positive attitude. Here are three components of your emotional foundation. They contribute to your positive attitude. Now, no one has a perfect score, and even some with poor foundations succeed at getting and keeping a positive attitude. Once you know the foundations of a positive attitude, you can strengthen your attitude by strengthening your foundation. One, a sense of belonging. Everything we do in life that enhances our sense of belonging builds positivity. Feeling that you are connected to family, community, and country counts. So does feeling you belong to your church, organization, club, team, and other things bigger than yourself builds enduring positivity to those who seek to be positive. Two, your sense of worth. For most, it starts with your immediate family in your early childhood. They instill in you an inner sense of well-being and of being loved. But as you grow, you build a self-image that includes your deepest beliefs about your worth. During this program, we will teach you how to build your self-image and enhance your sense of worth. Three, your sense of competence. To feel positive, you must feel capable. While we all have insecurities, it is important that you know that you are competent and capable of achieving the goals that you have set for yourself. Competence comes from working successfully and performing successfully and from recognition from yourself and others for those things you have achieved or will soon achieve. Not to overstate the obvious, but having a positive attitude is not that common. Most people don't want to raise their expectations because they fear being let down. They don't want to be seen as too positive because others ridicule them for being unrealistic. Now, it's time to talk a little defense. There are two powerful enemies of positive thinking. One is the people in your life, and the second is the conversation you have in your mind. We call it self-talk. 
Tom Hopkins said, don't walk away from negative people. Run. Todd Duncan asks, do you hang out with dream makers or dream breakers? A business associate once advised me, never hire people who tell you you can't do it or achieve something. You can get that advice for free. All of us experience positive and negative people in our lives. The simple recommendation is to avoid negative people wherever possible. Unfortunately, that is not always possible. But once you understand the value of a positive attitude, you will become much more aware of the influences others have on this positive, negative scale. You need to become skilled at spotting those who feel the need to add negative weight to the negative side of your attitudinal balance and stop them from doing so. So how do you deal with those negative people in your life that you can't avoid? You must recruit them to your dream. In way too many cases, we fail to fully inform those closest to us about our dreams and expectations. Reach out to your friends and family and share with them your most important dreams and goals. Use your best salesmanship to sell them on your dream. Let them know you want them on your team. Find people going where you are going or are already there. Now let's talk about that conversation we all have in our mind about what is going on moment by moment in our lives. We refer to this as self-talk. Very few people recognize how powerful it is. Self-talk is powerful because it steers our subconscious mind. Most of what we do, all our habits, good or bad, and all our instinctive actions and emotions are controlled by our subconscious minds. Remember how hard it was when you first tried to drive a car? It was hard because you were trying to do it with your conscious mind. Once driving a car was turned over to your subconscious mind, you were able to drive stress-free and listen to the radio and talk to your passengers and think about anything at all as you drove along. We will spend a lot more on this subject later, but here is an overview of how self-talk can work to make your positive attitude seem just as effortless as driving a car. Your subconscious mind stores information as images or pictures wrapped in emotions. Have you ever listened to a song on the radio and all of a sudden an event you had forgotten all about comes vividly to mind? It comes as a picture wrapped in emotions that are all as clear as crystal. A friend of mine told me that he heard a song from the 50s and all of a sudden he remembered exactly where he was when that song was popular. Not only that, he could vividly remember who he was with, what happened, and even the smell and taste of food that were a part of that memory. This is just a small example of how powerful the subconscious mind is. So here's the point. Those pictures and emotions get into your subconscious when you experience something that has emotional value or intensity. The key here is that your subconscious mind does not know what is real. It only knows whether it is vivid and emotional. Self-talk is the filter that modifies what the subconscious mind accepts. Let me give you an example. Joe was the top engineer in his company. His expertise alone made his company successful and the company's management team was deeply appreciative of his contributions to their success. So one day the CEO walked into his office and said, Joe, you've done such a wonderful job for this company that we have been looking for a way to recognize your genius. We have submitted your record of accomplishment to the National Association of Industrial Engineers and they have selected you to present your story from the main stage at the National Convention in three months. Now soon after the boss walked out of his office, Joe began to feel a deep-seated anxiety. He began to sweat and his heart began to race. Joe had no idea why he was feeling this anxiety attack, but for some reason, he was scared to death of the prospect of standing in front of that huge audience. I know you're wondering what this story has to do with self-talk, right? Here's the answer. When Joe was in grade school during a show-and-tell presentation to the kids in his class, they pointed out that his fly was open and started laughing. He was terribly embarrassed. Joe is now 37 years old, so this happened in the third grade some 30 years ago. How many times did it happen? The answer is that it happened not once, but hundreds of times, at least, according to his subconscious mind. That's because every time Joe self-talk thought about it, accompanied by strong feelings of embarrassment, 
his subconscious mind registered it just like it actually happened again. Every time he was home for the holidays and his parents or siblings brought up that experience, Joe's subconscious mind registered it and its accompanying emotions just like it happened again. So it's no small wonder that Joe was having an anxiety attack. His subconscious knew for certain that when he got up in front of an audience, something terrible was going to happen. That's because of his self-talk and the talk of others around him, burning that reality so deeply into his subconscious that when he had no conscious memory of that event, he felt the visceral emotional threat nonetheless. Here is a lesson. You must control your own self-talk about what is happening to you now and what did happen to you in the past. Wrap it in vivid, positive emotions. You can direct your subconscious to lock in positivity by controlling what you say to yourself and what you allow others to say to you. We will provide a lot more training on this process later. Your exercise here is to do these exercises today and start grooving them into your psyche. Positivity needs to become a habit, something you do without even thinking about it. So let's get started with some exercises that you can start now. Each is designed to build positivity in everything you do. Number one, do today's difficult things first. You're in the kind of work where you need to do the tough things first and get them out of the way. And then things get easier and easier throughout the day. Make your toughest calls first. Take your most challenging customers first. Take the biggest problems first. Do everything you can with them and move on to the next thing. Two, do everything as fast as you possibly can do it. Look at what you expect from yourself today and put in the effort to do more faster. Three, dress for success. Dress like you love life and love what you do. Spend the extra money on your outfit and wear your positive attitude. Four, put more energy and enthusiasm in every action you take. Even if it's just picking up the phone or sending an email, use action and enthusiasm. Action drives optimism and positivity. Five, decide you're going to be seen by others as positive. You're not making a decision to be positive. You're making a decision to show others that you are positive. Six, have a written plan for each day. Fill it with action and stick to it. Seven, Communicate your hunger with every customer. Don't act like you don't need the business. You know you need the business. Act like it. Okay, here's a little gut check for you. If you were a little turned off by one or more of these exercises, it shows you that you are resisting something. Take a closer look and tease out your motives, fears, and doubts. What it takes to be successful and positive does not change based on whether you like them. Learn them and live them. Download your Course 1 Chapter 1 checklist by right-clicking on the document below. Put it in a directory titled Sales Master 360.